Heat TV presents Homework Hotline, the after-school show that fuses learning with fun. Watch local teachers bring the classroom on air and online. This is Homework Hotline. Welcome to Homework Hotline. My name is Pam Halstead and I taught science at Fortuna High School. And I'm Jody Hamango. I currently teach science at McKinleyville Middle School. We have a great show for you today. It's so exciting. We have Dr. Gil Klein, professor, music professor from Humboldt State, and we have some amazing pieces of music he's going to play, and we're going to find out a lot about sound, basically, acoustics. Great. Okay, great. so Thank you. first up is the horn, horns and rainbows. Inside of every brass instrument is a rainbow. That is a series of tones which can be elicited Un, uh, not unlike the sun and moisture, but here with the tube, the entire tube length, and our lips to make tones. Uh, next, please. Here's the horn you're seeing. And next. Mm -hmm. And this is the bell you're seeing right now. This is a Baroque style bell painted by custom for us in the redwood trees, just like our county. Yes, next. And in the old days, these notes were known. These are a series of notes set forth in a book from 1638 by Fantini. Uh, and the horn is not a basso instrument, but in the middle. So playing notes in here. There's C, E, and G. Next, please. Cool. Is this guy Italian? Italian, yeah, yes. Fantini. Well, he was the dude. He was really a, nice. uh, a, a great guy. Uh, some of us locally have been playing natural horns for some time, horns without valves, playing the natural tones, those rainbow tones of the harmonic series. Next. And next. And here they are. Uh, there's actually two more notes that are, the horn doesn't particularly like. So I'll start on tone number four. Inside of this instrument, this tube, are all these notes. Here's four, five, six, seven, and eight. I missed seven. It's okay. Again. That's the third octave of this series. Now I'll play from 8 up to 16. We're on 12 right now? Yes. And there's 16. Every brass instrument has these notes. It's up to us to have uh, our ears our ear skill, or oral skills, and the lips to be able to get those notes. They so even, you guys, one other thing, you might wonder, like, how could he miss a note? Because he's playing these notes just based on his lips, how his lips are vibrating against the mouthpiece and as the, muse, as the wind goes through this instrument. In our pitch memory of, yeah. of, of oh, practice. Oh, and that as well. It's like playing basketball, making three-pointers and free throws, trying not to miss those notes. Yeah. The series goes beyond 16. Here's 16. And it goes up to 32, which is a tough thing to do indeed. I won't do that right now. <laughs> Next, please. And uh, the modern horn, of course, fills these in by having vowels, which add a half step and a whole step and a step and a half. Go back one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, back one. Yeah, th th this is what uh, the orchestral horn section uh, looks like these days. The horns of the orchestra form a, uh, a, a, a real backbone of, of, the, of that ensemble. Next. So, we're talking about metal here. And next. Now we go organic. Let's go organic. And we'll put this one aside over here. I didn't plan for that, so there's a reach. Yeah? So, uh, next up, the oldest horns are probably made out of bone and animal. So here's a couple of candidates. Uh, these are steer horns. This one a little bit longer. This one a little shorter. This one I discovered yesterday has some particles inside. Organic indeed. I will not play this right now. <laughs> this one's much, much better. Here's the tone. And we want to know what note that is. So you notice I'm carrying oh. this. Oh, I think I yeah. know. Oh, can, can I you find it? Yeah. Lower, 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 lower. <laughs> that, that, that one. That one. Mm -hmm. That's a B. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know 
that. Oh, good. Okay. Because <laughs> the paper said B flat, and I'm like, wait, what? The okay. note C. No, actually, it says flat G. Never mind. Oh, that's, this is this one. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. But I did a switcheroo. Yeah. Oh, that's good. You got to know your stuff. <laughs> the note C. <laughs> <laughs> it's generally two foot, four foot, eight foot, and sixteen feet. They're all just simple multipliers. And when so you say that, you mean length of length of instrument. Instrument. And what do you know? It is just a little bit less than twelve inches. So that gives us our B foot. natural. There you go. Okay. And in acoustics, it's all about the length of the tube that gets that sound. Next nice. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, one of my favorites. Oh. In antiquity, it's uh, not difficult to find certain large shells. This is a Triton shell. And the tone of this one is uh, altogether different. It's a very hard shell. This animal is a mollusk, and it's a specifically a gastropod, which is a kind of snail. Great, yeah. So there's two famous uh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. two famous shells. One is the conch, and the other one is the triton. In the Pacific waters, the triton is a, is a favorite. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Find uh, it. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, what is it? It is a B flat. Yes. <laughs> this one plays an octave. If I tune carefully with my right hand. <laughs> the nice thing about this is you can change notes. Is that why? Changing the length okay, yeah. and also muffling it. There's some acoustic mysteries inside. Oh, yeah. And no one's really quite sure what, what's happening in there. Two things are, are possible. Uh, we know I'm shortening the tube, but uh -huh. the pitch is going down. Uh -huh. So it should be lengthening. So it's reversed of what we'd expect. Oh. There's a mystery there. Oh, I like mysteries. Yeah, mysteries. So B flats <laughs> are in um, four and a half foot and nine foot range. So this one's going to be half of four and a half. No, this is. This is four and a half. This is a low tone. If I played the low tone with that pitch, it would be the two and a quarter foot B flat. So this inside is actually four and a half feet long. Oh wow, it's all wound up. That's what it's like a spiral. Right. So yeah, that's so cool. It's the tube that is that cool. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those things in nature over and over again. Right. With the and a way to indirectly observe and measure what's happening on the inside yeah. that you can't see. If that's I could right. get inside and measure right. that, it would be four and a half feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which Very is, which cool. Is okay, yeah. next. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the more famous ones is actually uh, the shofar. Uh, in biblical times, we have the story of the siege of Jericho, right? And all the horns which are used to bring the, vol the, the, the walls down. Yeah. Now, this is a short little instrument, and it's tough to get. The mouthpiece is so small, I can barely fit it on my lips. I'm going to set inside my lips. I'm surprised I got that. <laughs> What's that pitch? Oh, that's nice. D flat, D flat. Wait, I don't know where D flat is. Wait, C D. Just keep searching. Wait, is no, that no, it? Was that it? Oh yes. Okay, okay there I'm it up is. Two more. Wait, up. Got it. Got it. Oh, it's C sharp or C -sharp. D flat. Okay, right. yeah. So this is also going to be a little bit less than a foot because it's higher than C, mm -hmm. so it has to be shorter. And we measure it and we get, uh, yeah, well, this is about 12 inches in here. It's, there's a mystery going on, on here too. Well, it's all weirdly shaped as well. It's oddly shaped, the mouthpiece shaped. is ridiculously small. Yeah. And uh, yeah. these so are curiosities. By the way, higher. I should say that this tape measure has been around the country and around the world uh, in museums. Sometimes. Oh, because you took visits there. You visited yeah. them. Someone once called me Indiana Klein. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But uh, it's always uh, fun to find uh, new um, uh, pitches of instruments or names on instruments in museums that people mm -hmm. have not seen before. It's yeah. really a, a real right. Next one, please. The other famous Ooh. Uh, shofar what kind is this of one. Is that? Now, this is a kudu. That's a kudu. Neat. This is the. The, uh, the business end of the animal kudu, you know? I'd have two of these things. Wow, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. On guard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, this is a, uh, classified as a shofar because of its, um, of its construction and, and its boiling and the cleaning process. Now we have a lower instrument. Good. Oh. 
flat to my ears. But the question is, what's the length of this one? Did I give you an estimate there? Um, yeah, uh, you said 158? Uh, 32 inches. 32 inches. <laughs> if we trace this all the way through, it'd be about 32 inches, and I'm looking at 34 here, but I'd try it again just to be sure. So that's that note. Um, that is, is a beautiful instrument. Yeah. A great instrument, and I'm glad to have this one. Where did you get that? Uh, that was a present from my mom, who uh, brought it back from a tour of the uh, Bible lands. She said, well, oh. what can I bring back for you? I well, said, gee, I wonder. <laughs> I need a shofar. A horn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. must be shofar easy to sure. shop yeah. for. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good. Next. Now, um, the organic ones are finished. Let's look at some metal things. Here's a short metal horn from Nepal. Um, it's a, this one's misidentified as a kangling horn, which is actually made from animal born, animal horn. Sorry, uh, from human animal bone. Oh! The kanglin, yeah. And you sometimes see those in import shops. It looks like a thigh bone or leg bone. Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, that one's, those ones don't really interest me. In fact, I've seen a couple, and, and um, the story of their source is unfortunate. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so I like to go with the metal one. This one has a, a dragon head um, finish on it, which is a, a nice, um, nice touch. And the mouthpiece, like a lot of old mouthpieces, is a very flat thing, a uh, disc, very shallow. And this sound is not going to be what we might expect in this country. Ready? Ready. Huh. It's loud. <laughs> it's difficult for me to get because this mouthpiece is so wide. D, you say? No, it was B. I'm mean G. G. Yeah, G, yeah, yeah. yeah. So again, another. Uh, What's this one going to be here? So it's made in by co with copper. Copper. Is, is it pre-brass or is it just copper because of copper and they had it available? Oh, copper, of course, is uh, an element. Right. A pure uh, thing. Uh, and brass is an alloy. Right. Copper with uh, small amounts of, of um, zinc. Uh, tin. Zinc. 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 Yeah. Bronze and, and is tin. Yeah. yeah exactly. Uh, other ones as well. But this one, <laughs> it, the main thing is the sound. It's very nasal to our ears. And uh, it's just something we don't hear in this country uh, very much at all. Let's look at the next one. Okay. Next. Uh, right. So the most famous of oh, them are these long ceremonial horns. Uh, these, in this photo from 1938, are probably, what, 12 to 16 feet? And mm. you'll notice they have uh, join, uh, joints that, that uh, allow them to be reinforced, built in pieces, and also to collapse. Here's a short version. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Very nice. Now, this is only, what, four feet or something like that. Is it brass? This is mainly copper. Okay. I'll set it here to be stable. Copper body with brass uh, joinery and some paste jewels to finish off the appearance used in um, formal ceremonies. And this sound is a lot deeper. <laughs> What do you get? I didn't. D. D. Oh, D. D. Okay, hold on. Which means it's just a little bit under four feet. Yeah, in that pitch. Okay. So that's that's a, a fun one. Let's do the next slide. Now the uh, the one that dates back to Roman times is a cornet. And this one hmm. is uh, an experiment in progress. I had a hard time getting this, this instrument, and it's been modified a few times. But you notice this one is quite longer, and the tubing is not unlike horn. Well, that's D for sure. Here's the main tone. Lower, lower, lower. One more. Half step. I've got it tuned in B flat right now. Oh, okay. So this is nine feet long acoustically. And it plays tones more like that horn harmonic series. It can get those tones of a larger uh, series of, of uh, rainbow tones. Gladiator theme. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where did you get that one? 
Uh, this is an import, you know, made overseas for those that want to get together and, and play, you know, Roman reenactments on the weekends. So oh. it's uh, not much seen <laughs> in, these, in these parts. Nice. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, now we come to, to the real one, the trumpet, yeah. Uh, these things over here, not these drums, these guys right here. And notice they're straight. Yeah, that's, a, that's one. That's the Beatles. Yeah, the Beatles, of course, yeah. Yeah, keep going, yeah, dance, yeah. Uh, and, you know, you just have something like this. Now, this is about eight feet. One more, please. Yeah, and us from Humboldt State in New York, now Cal Poly, in the Metropolitan Museum, there's six of these trumpets, roughly this size, not this instrument, but uh, uh, the type of instrument. Next, please. <laughs> But here's this one right here, reversed, yeah? So this is, and one more now, please. And again, yeah. So here's our series. Am I pointing? Uh-huh. I've got some condensation, so let me dump some water here, yeah, and then we'll just be a second. It seems like spit, but it's condensation. You yeah, know it is, how almost pure water. When you're warming the thing and it causes the water, okay, whoops, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I were stuck in the desert, I'd exhale through this and recoup my energy. Oh, okay. Yeah. What so was in your if breath? you're on a deserted island, wish for a horn. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. yeah. Exhale through that. Yeah, yeah. Here's four. Okay. That one was flat, so I moved mm -hmm. the horn into slide mm. to fix the tuning. Here's eight. And this one I brought in because it's flat. Yeah, it's a touch screen. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> Here's a tune. slide I can tune those out of tune notes. Nice and this is Baroque period in terms of it is. who was doing From, that? Well, actually late Renaissance 1550 or so up to the time of Bach 1750. Oh. Yeah. yeah the most famous horns of the time period are straight. This is a, a post horn I also used an English a male called the coach horn. It only has two good notes. Which are uh, actually two and three, which is off the scale. It's off the scale. Can we this go up horn there? is no. so ridiculously short for its its dimensions. It only has two good notes, and that's the famous uh, uh, the famous coach horn gallop. Uh, when we get to the horn world again, we have the ability to add things called crooks. So a natural instrument without any other tuning can add these bits right here and get us different pitches. So here's the tuning trick still used by some French horns. So this is a hunter's trumpet because it was, uh, this is sort of uh, uh, like the hunting horns that you'd use on horseback. If I get rid of this now, you heard the main note right there, and go back to this forfeit instrument. Wait, oh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> We're down here with the Slow Jaeger trumpet. Slow see? On there. see? So this is four feet. If I measure that round tubing right there, I total up four feet. If I add this, it's going to be lower. So look lower on the keyboard. Yeah, okay. Or old pitch G. Yeah. Now I keep oh. adding these in turn, I get lower and lower pitches. This is how. Uh, so you're changing plays. the lengths, but I'm feeling like you started with a longer length and then you took it out and it went lower. Is that. That's completely Just wrong. Just a fake out. Yeah. Oh, it's we a fake out. <laughs> Just to check it. So here I've okay. added a larger loop. Let's okay. see what we get now. D. Lower, lower. E so flat. It's, yeah, E flat. Yeah, which would be at low pitch uh, E in the old days. I'll add a larger crook here. We could do this forever, and sometimes uh, in my resonance in doing tests, I will do this forever. 
I've got more of these crooks at home. This is so the reason they did this was to, to more easily carry something around as well? I it's mean, more portable, for more sure. More portable, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can also put your hand in the bell. Which I've changed keys, so let me find my, my center location. What's this one? D flat. Which is burrow pitch D. So here's that tune I played on the slide a minute ago. So in the bell, hand, horn players use their hand in the bell to tune notes and therefore saving the need for further uh, mechanisms. When yeah. I was in high school, I bought, in, I bought records that was that one of that was one of the pieces. So that's what I like to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> While we're at it, there are different size horns as well. So here's, yeah. Oh, duct tape. No, no I mean, well, leather. no, electrical it's tape. Leather. No, it's leather. Wait, really? It's leather, yeah. Oh, cool, this yes, I see that. Now, this is a horn, but it's kind of a trumpet. What's, What's the distinguishing? Uh, I, don't, I don't know these then. Uh, there, I got it. In other words, it's four and a half foot B flat. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the difference between a trumpet and a horn is the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> it's not always so easy. Obviously, this is a horn. Yeah, that's... And this is the form of a horn. Yes. I'm using a cornet mouthpiece, like a trumpet mouthpiece. The bell has a, a, a flare to it. Mm -hmm. It should sound horn-like, but this is ridiculously tiny, right? This yeah. It's ridiculous. It's very tiny. Yeah. It's like a piccolo. So, trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. While we're at it, I'll go to the normal <laughs> trumpet. And here we see, oh, we can do some uh, some principles of conservation here. That's right? kind of cool. It's yeah. Such a so this is four and a half guy. feet. Mm -hmm. This is four and a half feet. Wow. Okay. Neat. And to further the point here, I have a uh, so-called herald trumpet with me today. Oh, that's crazy. Because I never thought that they had valves. I mean, didn't the heralders... Well, the, well, now, the original modern, herald trumpet yes, is... that one. Is this one. Yes. Because yes. we, in, in those days, we trumpet players had to play for all the big ceremonial functions of mm -hmm. a city or of a kingdom or whatever. Right. And who's got the, the, the big bucks? The king. And who has to fund all this stuff. So this is a modern... Mm -hmm. uh, fake out but it has these valves like a modern trumpet and i could play if i wanted to play jazz on this one i won't because it'd be ridiculous it wouldn't look right <laughs> here's those pictures That'd be kind of cool. it's ridiculous it sounds the same it looks longer right yes it does it's also four and a half feet oh you just unwrapped exactly the nice thing about brass instruments is they can be uh, rewound in all number of, of, of configurations. Hmm. So that's that's the fun part. Well, does anybody use that giant one there, the uh, straight? Uh, it's used for events like uh, the Olympics in 1984 in oh, Los Angeles. Okay. There were uh, some 60 trumpets made that were, like you know, that. That were neat. Yeah, yeah. And cool. you know, here, here's a horn, right? This is a fox hunting horn. It plays one note. <laughs> Because you know, and fox hunting calls, it's not the pitches that tell you where everyone else should go. You're calling to the people saying, you know, I've found the fox. Follow me. Mm -hmm. It means come over here. This it is almost little... sounds duck-like in a yeah, way. These are and nasally or whatever. Well, yeah. I mean, these yeah. do not sound like we want them to. No. You can Unless even... you're a, somebody trying to know where the people are in the fox hunt. <laughs> Here's a horn, right? Yeah. It's a surprise. Well, I... There's something else inside. Nice. Lead inside, oh, cool. Which is a pretty rare one, indeed. It's okay, let's vibrating. Yep. Uh, so bugles, you know, are the thing which is in between. And here's this bugle. All rainbow tones. So when you say, 
When we think rainbow, we think of Roy G. Bibb, or uh, there's no indigo, but whatever, uh, red, orange, yellow. And is that what you mean when you're rain a rainbow? The tones. Of, the tones. Those harmonics that uh, we saw on that chart earlier. To me, they're the tones of rainbow, which is the great thing about these instruments. They're there. We just have to find them. Yeah, next. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're going to skip this one. 1865. Uh, it's the end of the Civil yeah, yeah, yeah. War. Keep going. Yeah, next. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we'll go back one, if you would. Uh, with valve instruments, if you bring your, bring your guitar up now, Pam. Yes, my guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my guitar. So, it turns out, valves on instruments are like frets on a guitar. <laughs> this is a half-step valve. This one is a whole-step valve. This one, step and a half. And they are analogous to the frets on guitar that are... Um, something we, we probably see more often, except it works in the reverse. With brass instruments, we add tubing to make the notes lower, if that makes sense. Pam, if you do the, any open note. Okay, sure. And now let's start using a fret up there. With guitar, when you add frets, it raises notes. Just saying. The instruments are analogous, but the, the situation is reversed in how they work their half steps. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, good. And um, next, please. Mm -hmm. So here we have in my hand already, and keep going, more trumpets. And we already saw that one. Here's how valves work inside. Here's how trombones work oh. their half steps. <laughs> if you want to know these things, you can look these up on a, a dictionary or online. Fingering charts is how we get the notes. And plastic. Okay. Uh -huh. Here we go. Vuvuzela. <laughs> What's that note? Uh -huh. G. Good, 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 good. Okay. And to finish off the... the uh, soccer. <laughs> they were really the, popular in uh, when the World Cup. Soccer. To finish off Game. the... Uh, I don't remember I'm what year, but here. everybody's playing them. And wasn't that... Was, it was in the continent of World Africa? Cup. Soccer. About, oh gosh, 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Right now. yeah. So here's the last one today. This oh, is gosh. my favorite hose horn. Let me find my place here. I sound like an elephant, right? Elephants are the original trumpeters. <laughs> The same tune I played earlier wow. can now be had with um, adding a bell. I can get more of a trumpet. So here is our white fabric soft um, fa fabric softener. Oh, white very magic. good, very good. Wow. Thirty seconds. Nice, yeah. nice. And finally, I'll do my helicopter Doppler. Now okay, good. Do we have to get down? <laughs> Should we get low? Okay. <gasps> okay. Oh, that's so cool. That is cool. <laughs> thank you for watching. Yay, thank you for watching, everybody. What a great show. Thank you very much, Gil. Yeah, You're that welcome. was awesome. Yay. That was wonderful. Thank you.